I joined the SSC, so many people uh, have told me that I've gone bananas, uh, that I took it as a sign uh, that, I that I should study them. So I'm, I'm moving off my usual comfort zone. Uh, I know a number of you are here for the first time. And in years past, uh, for a whole bunch of years, I've done healing experiments with mice. And, th and that's really been my, my thing. And, and the very short version, to get this out of the way in one minute, is I take very, very good looking people. <laughs> and it, it's an interesting correlation that, that ugly people can't heal. Uh, but uh, I take very good looking people who are skeptical and inexperienced. I train them in a healing technique that I've devised and is also public. Uh, and then we uh, put our hands around animal cages, uh, norm various types of mice usually, which have various types of cancer. We take them through a healing protocol, an interesting thing happens. Uh, and this is uh, to get this out of the way, because it's not the focus of today. So this is an example of an ulcerated cancerous mouse. Uh, once really good looking people put their hands around it, uh, given sufficient time, the mouse is cured. And they're cured for life. Uh, and so among the interesting things we find is not only full cure, full cure for life, immunity to further injections of cancer, and I could keep going on. And I've reported on these for quite some time. Um, and it's interesting, it, it's interesting with so many replications that it, it's no longer interesting to ask, can you cure cancer? It's been done too many times, hundreds and hundreds of mice, and it's not interesting. We've got to move on to other uh, secondary correlates and such. And so uh, I, in terms of numbers of experiments, just on these, uh, what you just saw was a mammary cancer. I have two of these at City University, two at, one at, three at. Uh, we have uh, experiments using uh, sarcomas. We have experiments using oncogenic mice. We have experiments using nude mice. Those are pretty racy. Uh, extremely aggressive cancers. I've done it in vitro. I've done it, I've done it, I've done it. You get the idea. So I have a whole lot of uh, experiments on mice and healing cancer. And frankly, the, the main uh, research interest I have right now is to see if I can turn this into a therapy, because the phenomenon's there. Can I turn this into a self-replicating therapy? So among the interesting findings we've had is we can take cells from a remitting mouse put it into a fully infected mouse, it'll cure that mouse. Uh, something's going on, and the question is, how do we unravel that and such? This is not the purpose of the talk today. Uh, I've only reported here about half of my mice experiments, so I have more to go in future years. Uh, but the good news is, no rodents today. <laughs> yeah. And, and so I, I got letters from rodents, and they say, please, enough already, you know, with the, um, let it go, let it go. Now, it turns out rodent research is a problem. It's a problem uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, it, there, there are, it's very difficult to get uh, through animal ethics committees. And I, I could tell you chapter and verse of really ugly stories of what, what's happened to me with anim, animal ethics. And, and here's a real short version. This is the University of British Columbia. We can't allow you to do your healing studies on mice because you don't do anything to the mice. And so you can't give cancer to a mouse you don't do anything to. I say, but we, we've cured them in 13 experiments. Yeah, but you don't do anything. <laughs> it's, it's very strange out there. And, and so, uh, so you have that difficulty. The secondary difficulty you have is these things take a long time. If you want to find out if the mice are cured rather than remitted, you're going to need, you got to wait two years. Did it come back? And so when I say the mice are cured, I'm not saying, hey, they got better for a week. I'm talking, we, the, do the math, 13 experiments times two years each, and I'm getting old. And, and, and so I need something that I, that I can last longer and get through more iterations, because I have a whole list of research questions I want to get through. So I'm looking for a simpler model that's robust, that's not subtle in its responses, like here's a mouse that's sick, here's a mouse that's cured. And so I've been searching for, I've done a number of experiments in vitro on, on various cell cultures. I did one at UC San Diego, uh, but when I replicated it at Brown, eh, didn't come out the same way. So I'm having some trouble with reliability in vitro. I, I, I'm waiting for a secondary uh, uh, study. 
I did last summer after last year's SSC at Wake Forest Med School, and we're replicating it in Providence. I don't know the answer to, to what happened yet, but I, I'm, I'm in the market for a quick down and dirty model that we can run through various healing iterations. And as I'm playing with that, uh, I came across um, through my um, friendship with Bernie Grad, who passed a couple of years ago, uh, Grad, uh, who's clearly, uh, I think, in, in any reasonable articulation of the history of healing, Grad's the guy. So all healing research comes out, one or another of Grad's lineage, experiments, plants, animals, uh, wound, you name it, it's Grad. And he worked at McGill University um, in Montreal, and he's the guy uh, who took it on the chin for the rest of us and, and just kept pushing the envelope, pushing the envelope, pushing the envelope, and showing that the stuff could be done. And one of the things uh, in my friendship with him uh, that he showed me was uh, in the 1980s, he never published this, so I'm kind of taking the ball and running with it. And again, it's within the context of looking for something simpler than a mouse model. He discovered, and by discovered meaning someone came to him and showed him they could do it, he discovered this one guy, George Ilya, who could mummify bananas. And I remember sitting in Grad's uh, living room and he said, well, I want to show you mummified bananas. And I said, mummified bananas, mummified bananas. I mean, what do you say about a mummified banana? Well, you can say a lot of things about a mummified banana. Um, and I'm going to show you, well, here's a picture of one, and I'll come back to that. This banana is about 30 years old. I'm going to pass it around. So this is going to be a show and tell today. I'm going to pass it around, uh, and I'd ask, you're, you're free to, it, it's wood-like. You could, I'm asking you not to. This, is, this means something to me because it's from grad. Um, it can be sawed. It can be drilled. It can be, don't abuse this. You know, this is going to be, this is going on the mantelpiece whenever anybody calls me bananas. So uh, I'm going to pass this around so you can see what I'm talking about here. So, you know, touch it, but don't, don't see if it'll snap. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. So this is a 30-year-old banana, and I'm going to talk about what, what Grad found and then what we found. So what, this is also a banana, but this is somewhat younger. And, and George Ilya would hold this for... Uh, the dosage that they gave, he liked to hold it for two and a half minutes, seven times a day, for a couple of days. And he would just hold it for two and a half minutes at a time, and they'd put it down, and he'd do it, and he'd do it, and that's what he liked to do. And then if you did it, it would turn into what you're seeing here. It doesn't spoil. The autolytic process is stopped, and you'll, I'll see that, I, I, I'm not really sure how and why, it is stopped, but I'm going to invite you to take part in a banana experiment. And the very short version of what goes on is this. I, ne I needed another. So we'll say this is a, a, treated, an, a treated banana, meaning you, he was spinning it seven times, two and a half times. This is an untreated banana. In terms of weight loss, so as I'm doing this, I'm talking about weight loss. Treated, untreated. You start doing this, and the weight loss is tremendously accelerated for a treated banana. And I mean tremendously. I mean, we could do some math on it. But what happens is tremendously it desiccates, does not rot in any way, shape, or form. And then eventually the rotting banana goes through the regular rotting process, the autolytic process. And the, then you end up with a non-statistically significant difference in weight. But a rotted banana is transparently a rotted banana. <laughs> it's not hard to figure it out. You don't need special equipment, you know, all that. And so it's a rotted banana. This, you, as you pass it around, you're clearly going to know it's not a rotted banana. But it, it rapidly desiccates and then catches up. So if we were just to go to the bottom line, say we'll do a statistical significance, is there a difference in weight loss? No. But the process is dr drastically accelerated uh, if, if you go through uh, uh, the, the, the treatment process. So again, this is how it ends up. This is a picture of the actual banana that's being passed around. Here's how we do this. There are stages of ripening. This is for people who have gone bananas or who want to. 
And it turns out that you can really only mummify bananas reliably if it's at stage one or two. So if you haven't already, I mean, this is at least stage three. I'm going to give it a try collectively in here. I'm going to see what happens if we, as a, as a group, can mummify this banana. I don't mean it's going to happen right away. Uh, but it, 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 it seems not to work if it's too far along the rotting or the ripening process. Ripening and rotting are essentially the same. So if it's too far along the process. And so, again, I'm encouraging you, play with this. It, it, you're going to get some looks, and people will actually think you've gone bananas. I've gone to a grocery store, and I say, do you have any green bananas? And they say, well, the ripe ones are out there. And I say, yeah, no, I want a green one, but the ripe ones are out there. So I want a green Why? <laughs> Look them straight in the eye <laughs> and say, I'm going to mummify them. <laughs> <laughs> You get it at discount. Because <laughs> they want you out of the frickin' store. <laughs> Don't talk to customers. Take what you need. Get out, get out. You know, and have you tried the, the, the store down the road? And so uh, you want to do this at stage one or two uh, is really what we're shooting for. And the greener, the better. And we try treatments. We're talking about treating a banana here, folks. And so you can treat bananas, as you see in the top left, like this. We, we pistol grip them, we try them here, we've tried all sorts of things. Bottom left, acupuncture. <laughs> hey, if you've gone bananas, what the hell, you know? And so <laughs> we've tried it through healing surrogates. So the bottom right is cotton, which also goes back to the great grad. Uh, when we find healing surrogates through cotton and water and things of, of those sorts. Um, and so I'm going to report on what happens with all of these things. But the effect isn't particularly subtle. This is day one, an example, untreated and treated. Obviously, there's no difference. So we're starting out. You're, you're holding this for however long you're holding it. Whether it's treated or untreated, it's going to look about the same. But look, by day 26, it's, it's pretty much over. Some people do it faster than others. And, and again, you don't have to. You don't have to do detailed things to find out there's a difference going on here between one group or the other. The bottom one is not reacting the way the top one is. The top one, the untreated, will get rotten, fruit flies will abound, and it's going to get ugly and smelly and everything else. Nothing like that's going to happen until it becomes essentially wood. I say essentially because it's not really wood. We put it under a microscope and you go, I don't know, it's a tree, who knows. So there is a, there's clear differences that go on. You can do this with parts. So we slice up bananas. We actually have some now skin bananas. It's going on right now. I don't know what's going to happen. We'll find out. Um, we tried it with tomatoes. It doesn't work. <laughs> Potatoes sometimes work. And, and once again, I suggest uh, be playful, see what happens. So we have, at this point, about 50 iterations of the banana experiments trying to look for patterns. And this comes from the question, do we have a viable healing model that we could start doing a variety of, of, of tests about? So our targets, for the most part, have been bananas. And this is the bulk of it. Uh, but we've done sections. We've done potatoes, tomatoes. Now, the methods of delivery, you look at the list. Palms, so this means what it sounds like. So you hold it in the palms for whatever the duration is. Uh, we do it with fingertips. We do it with pistol grips. We do it by putting the banana on chakra points. And wait till you find out what happens with that. It's nutty. Uh, we do it with, with under pyramids. We do it with acupuncture. We do it with distant healing, proximal healing, touch, not touch, close, all this. We tried dose variations. We tried healing surrogates, cotton water, conduits, uh, oak dowels, things of that nature. So we've tried a lot of different stuff than Grad's original uh, experiments. So the real summary is what's taking place is unknown. I, mean, I don't know what's happening. Something's obviously happening. But what it is, I don't know. Frankly, I need a, a plant physiologist. Uh, mummification is certainly different from desiccation. Uh, it, again, it does not rot. It's, it simply very, very, very rapidly uh, desiccates. 
this is contact dependent. Now this is very curious to me. I have, as some of you know, a whole bunch of studies on mice and such. I use, I've, I have EEG studies, I have functional MRI studies, I do it from distance, I, do, I replicate studies on healing from two inches to 2,000 miles, I get the same readings. Distance doesn't seem to matter. Uh, healing doesn't respect distance. Mummification does. You have to touch the banana. And it doesn't have to be, I gotta grab it, I just have to make some contact. So even if you're a millimeter away, it won't mummify. It's pretty interesting. It can be blocked. I can't block the healing. I haven't found a way to block the healing. So we can block it with a thin layer of plastic. So you wrap your, a, a, a saran wrap on your hand and you do the regular thing. You've, you've mummified a banana. You put a, a, a saran wrap, it won't mummify. It's contact dependent. Um, yeah, and we can block it with a whole lot of other things. We, it, grounding doesn't seem to matter. It's dose dependent, but the dose varies by person. So George liked to spin this seven times, two and a half minutes at a time. Grad said, reasonably, let's try it five minutes at a time, see if it accelerates it. It wouldn't mummify. It slowed down. And you hit a certain point. So he was comfortable with two and a half minutes. Other people, five minutes at a time. Other people, 10 minutes at a time. And, and what seems to matter in terms of dose is cumulative dose. And what we found is you need to be touching the banana for approximately a total of an hour. And then you can just leave it alone. It'll mummify. So if you want to do that at four 15-minute intervals, you want to do it at 12 five-minute intervals, you, want, you need to put in an hour's time with the banana. That's what we found. And there is some variation by person. You don't have to try to heal, but you can stop it. If I try deliberately to not let it mummify, just a mental intention, it doesn't mummify. But in order to get it to mummify, it'll just mummify. So simply the fleeting intent. So you don't have to get into real flopping on the floor all excited about this stuff. Just hold it with a casual intent to, to mummify. It'll mummify. You can't do it with cotton. You can't do it with water. At this point, I'm reasonably certain that cotton works as a healing surrogate. I'm really certain that water works as a healing surrogate. I have experiments holding water and giving the water to cancerous mice. The mice get cured. If I immerse bananas in treated water, nothing. If I wrap them with treated cotton, nothing. They, they, they rot. There's, I, I, I'm really not sure how to think about this. You can put the banana on any, the heart chakra head, just tape it and walk around for an hour, and it'll mummify. <laughs> if you put it on a spot that doesn't have a chakra, it rots. Try it. You too can go bananas. <laughs> so as I'm running out of time here, are we adding or are we subtracting? I don't know. Are we, how are we suppressing the normal autolytic process. What hormones, what enzymes, what, 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 we, we need to do a lot of work on this. So really what's going on, I don't know. Whoops. Is it chakras? Might it be resonant bonding? Some of you know my resonant bonding with the mice. We've had selected but not consistent resonant bonding when you take bananas off a hand. So you have a hand of mice, of uh, mice, yes, see. <laughs> a hand of, I've gone bananas. So a hand uh, of, if you take a banana, a banana, some become randomly treated, some become randomly untreated. Sometimes we've gotten some indication of some resonant bonding with physically separate um, uh, bananas. Uh, we obviously need some genomics on the problem, and thank you. <laughs> the, the, real, the real bottom line here, before I take questions, is it, it's not turning out to be a great mouse surrogate. No. 
It's, it's still, I don't know what's happening, and it's not, it's, direct, it's not directly analogous to the healing. So when we do the mice, we don't touch the mice. You gotta touch the banana. So it, it's a different process, so it, it's curious. As we take questions, and for the rest of the day, I'd also like to try and experiment if Adam will start it. If we could take this, and everybody just hold it for like a minute and pass it on. And I wanna see if this, can we have an SSC mummified banana? This is, the, this is the greenest we could find. Adam got this for me. And so just, and you don't have to go nuts, just kind of hold it like, I have gum bananas, pass it on, you know, and, and we'll see what happens. So uh, I'd like that back. I'd also like the grad banana back, please, uh, at the end of this. Uh, Bill, I have a question right here. Yeah. Uh, have, so one thing that comes to my mind is uh, the role of methylgloxal. If you search on methylgloxal and bananas, you're going to see quite a bit turning up, and then you're going to read works by people like Albert St. Giorgi on methylgloxal, so healing, you're going to read about that in that too, so I think that would be the place I would encourage you very strongly to look at. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's on the list. Thank you. Humans, as well as our primate relatives, eat bananas, is it possible that this isn't something the human being is doing at all, but it's some sort of weird plant defensive reaction to the detected presence of a plant predator? That, that would be a serious flaw in evolution, uh, because if you as the predator come and in only 26 days it's going to mummify, it would have to be a very slothful uh, predator, yeah. <laughs> Jerry, I think, I don't know where, I don't know who's, okay, Julie has it. I Julie. Have a, I have a, a question and then a comment. First, whose genius idea was that to pass the, the green banana around the room? Whose genius idea was? I think it was mine. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't recall. I think it was somebody on the council, though. I yeah, think go it ahead. was. Go ahead. Uh, um, <laughs> my question is, and you and I talked about this briefly, but, um, a, I so appreciate you trying to find an alternative to a mouse model. And um, a banana is not a whole living thing the way You know, I tried, I, the alternative to the mouse model, I, I tried to use freshman, but I couldn't get it through an IRB. Yeah, well, <laughs> keep trying that, but. Um, yeah, mama five but fresh. I would suggest something that is a whole living thing. A banana yeah. is like a fingernail. Like yeah. I, so a whole plant might be a better representation. But I, I, I really, I agree with you. And this doesn't seem to be a, a good surrogate for the healing research, but it is something that's curious. Uh, and I, I encourage you to play. And, and, and here's an interesting thing. Uh, Grad, in his own inimitable style, would give mice to healers he knew, and bananas then after, after this to healers he knew. There were a, a whole number of healers who could not do this. And there were some pretty well-known, you'd know the names if I said it, and I have a list of, because I have some of Grad's lab notes, uh, of the healers who could and the healers who couldn't, but it, it, and this was Grad's speculation to me, the healers who couldn't heal, it, it, they were almost um, turned off by it, like, this is stupid, uh, uh, I'm not bananas, you know, and whereas I have lower standards, uh, I'll, I'll try anything, yeah. And the ones who said, oh, this is stupid, couldn't do it. Whereas they were, had clearly passed the test of healing in his lab. I don't, I don't know, Gene, you're there, but so, Adam's got the mic. <laughs> so um, what other things could George Il Il? Ilya. Ilya do besides this to bananas, and why did he even want to try to do this? You know, I, I actually don't know the answer to that. Um, mm -hmm. you, when you're sitting in Grad's house you're, and he's showing you all his historical stuff, you're just too awed at the stuff. That, I mean, I, so I really don't know how he, how he started it, okay. yeah. I have a comment and a question. Um, I share uh, Bill's reverence for Grad. I got to work with him for uh, more than a summer, and he gave me a mummified banana, which I drilled a hole in and used for a keychain for, yeah. for many years. Now but you my, can make your own. <laughs> <laughs> but my, my question is, is this totally a binary phenomenon? That is to say, if, no. the, if the person did just a little less than they should have? No, uh, it isn't. No, we, we've taken it in the dose uh, question to 
it's not all or none. You get, we've had partially mummified bananas with insufficient dose. So it's not a binary response. It, it, it's close to it, but you still have, you can tell when it's rotting. And it, it, you can see that it's starting to take on, but then it just kind of, the mummification process is eliminated. I got Jerry, Gene, uh, and Beverly, but uh, you know. So I, I showed in my presentation two different kinds of water, the easy water and the regular. The easy water sticks to the protein. It won't evaporate very quickly. The ordinary water can evaporate very quickly. I'm just wondering, I don't have an answer for you, but just an, an idea whether touching it might somehow convert the easy water that's stuck to the proteins and sugars in the banana to ordinary water, and then it'll evaporate quickly. Is yeah. that a possible hint? I, I, I would think it's, I can't rule it out. And it, it's really just any contact. So you, you don't have to grab the thing, you just, but you can't, I mean, we've really locked our hands in it one millimeter away, and it, it doesn't, mum, it's astonishing to me, considering the, the amount of distant healing experiments that I've done. And so I've done EEGs, functional MRIs from a distance, uh, cancer cures from a distance, all that stuff, and this is contact dependent. We've never had a banana mummify by just standing there and doing it or even wrapping it up. And the part that is, is most perplexing to me is we, we certainly can use cotton as a surrogate for healing. I mean, that's, I think, reasonably nailed. And, but if we wrap the banana, it doesn't mummify. It still rots. And I, I'm not sure how to think about that. And so my problem is I have too many unknowns that this becomes not a particularly viable model uh, to continue the healing research. So I, it's curious, but I don't know what to do with it. I, yeah. I, I agree with Jerry. I think a key issue is the, the rapid loss of water. And I'm thinking, you know, the GDV camera might be a good way to, to study the mummification process before it becomes wood-like. Yeah. Because then you could look at sections and explore how it changes yeah. with a controlled banana from the same bunch that was untreated. Yeah that's just going through ripening. That might be one way to look yeah. at least energetic. Vernon, if you're, yeah, Vernon, we, you, you hear Beverly said, yeah, we're, we're, that's an experiment we're doing. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you, that, it, it's a good idea. Okay. I think Gene's been waiting here, Eugene? If you got we'll more time. More. We'll do two more questions then. Okay. I was just wondering, if is this possibly a natural process, uh, like say part of the banana tree's reproduction uh, process and then uh, I was thinking maybe we could send a, a freshman a bananologist out to a banana tree that hasn't been harvested and count if see if they can find any mummified bananas yeah. that have dropped from the tree or something like that. Yeah, I, and I don't I don't know enough to answer the question. Just one comment. Um, uh, a long while ago, I witnessed uh, a woman who was uh, one of the more gifted energy healers in the Boston area, clear cloudiness out of a quartz crystal by doing something similar. And my sense is that one possibility is the cloudiness was caused by some kind of interstitial water that she uh, trapped in the crystal itself that she drove out simply by holding it and focusing on it. Yeah. So this may work for inanimate objects as well. It might, it yeah. might, yep. We're just starting, but again, I, I recommend you all try to play. The, again, the greener the banana, the better. Thank you, know? you very much.